Israel is not the one doing any blockade of Gaza. You don't want to call it a blockade if that, I guess, hurts your feelings. Uh, or again, it's like too extreme a statement. That's fine. But like you're, you're depriving a group of people from being able to exercise any sea, air, or really autonomous land uh, trade with military well, force. You can call we're it a soft blockade if you want. How come you are not saying that Egypt puts a blockade on Gaza? I would say that. I'd say Egypt enforces the blockade as well. Sure. So I'm glad I get to argue with somebody on the far right because I see the, the, the same types yeah, of games that are played on the far left. I think okay. one issue that people on the far left have when they're critical of Israel is they constantly weaponize or they use international law in ways that don't make sense. However, on the flip side, um, I think it's equally silly to say things like, well, what occupied territories? Sure, they weren't occupied from a Palestinian state. I agree with that. One has never existed. Um, but to pretend like there aren't millions of Arab people that feel completely dispossessed from their land. Palestinian to Arabs is what Nazi for Germans. So on the Israeli side, so here's always my fear um, when, when I look at Israel is the question is, is Israel doing something to move towards a permanent establishment of peace or are they doing whatever they can to maintain the status quo so that they can continue to expand into the West Bank? If, the, if a huge effort is taken to demilitarize Gaza, I'm okay with that because the Gaza situation is insane because it's basically just been 20 years of like nonstop rockets from Gaza into Israel over and over and over and over again. It's really ridiculous. But if a demilitarization of Gaza happened, that has to come paired with some other activity, for instance, like a lessening of the blockade, right? If you're going to establish a, some kind of military presence there and get rid of the militancy in the Gaza Strip, I'm okay with that. I think that's a good thing to do. I think it's stupid. It's hurting everybody, Palestinians and Israelis. But if you do that and you don't also couple that with like a, a lessening of the blockade, well, then you have to wonder, okay, well, what is the blockade for? I thought it was to prevent arms and stuff from being shipped into the Gaza Strip. But now it seems like it's here as what, you know, the UN calls it collective punishment. Um, so, so yeah, I think that if you're going to negotiate with Israel, Israel has to be taking steps not just to ensure peace for themselves, but to be making steps towards a permanent settlement of the of the Palestinian-Israeli issue. It can't just be Israel fighting to maintain the status quo, knowing that the status quo is untenable, but continues to shore up their power in places like the West Bank, which I think is what Israel really cares about. Simcha, what do you think of Destiny's answer? Um, I, I actually was... Uh... I was uh, stuck in few of the terms. But when you don't uh, describe the situation uh, correctly, it's hard to find solutions. First, Palestine should have a leader. I don't know which is what. What is this Palestine that we are talking about? Who uh, we have uh, the population in Judea and Samaria again, not the West Bank, but the population in Judea and Samaria. Um, more than eighty percent of it supports Hamas atrocities of October seventh, according to polls. And we know that last time they had a free election, they voted in huge numbers for Hamas. So uh, what actually Destiny is looking for, I understand, is a leader. He, he mentioned um, like Sadat and Rabin, so apparently a suicide leader. That's what he, his idea of a leader. I don't, think that's, I don't think that's true for Rabin. I don't think it was true for Sadat. I don't think the, the, that's the outcome, but I'm trying to understand what, what I'm responding to that will go against more than 80% of his own people, some democracy, um, and try to live alongside Israel against the better judgment of the vast majority of his people that what they want to do is to kill Jews in the most terrible ways can, you can imagine, aka October 7th. So I really don't understand what kind of uh, a solution, a permanent solution, um, so Destiny is offering. Uh, but I think the problem is the starting point. Um, sadly, I say sadly because I think, of course, um, and history in that matter is on my side, that Judea and Samaria and Gaza Street ending the rest of the land of Israel, at least on the West Bank of the Jordan, including, including everything, not Judea and Samaria as the West Bank. Tel Aviv is also on the west bank of the Jordan River, if you look from the from the this um, strange point of view. Um, it's supposed to be the homeland of the Jewish people. That's the decision of the UN. That's the decision of the League of Nations before it. So it's supposed to be the homeland of the Jewish people. Um, illegal occupation took Gaza and Judea and Samaria on 1948. So they, it was illegal occupation by Egypt, and then it was illegal in, in Gaza, and it was illegal occupation by Jordan in Judea and Samaria. They, both of those countries do not want these areas. 
So suddenly, out of thin out, out of thin air, there is some kind of a very strange Palestine, quote unquote, that I don't know where it came from. What are its borders? Who are its people? Does it include the Arabs living in Israel? Does not it does not include the Arabs living in Israel? Does it include the Arabs in Gaza? Does not include the Arabs in Gaza? So they have some kind of uh, a collective that apparently is not a collective. It is not under any control. When you let them vote, they vote for Hamas. They support October 7th. But Destiny says that we don't want to have to reach a conclusion or a solution or a permanent solution with people who their permanent solution is from the river to the sea. Palestine would be Judenfrei, sorry for the term, because that's what they want, free from Jews. So what kind of permanent solution? The basic problem in the land of Israel is that there are Arabs and Jews put aside for a second Palestinians and Israelis, which is, I don't, I don't really understand this division. I am a Palestinian, according to uh, the Palestinian Charter, because my family is here from since 1914. Just because I am a Jew, I'm not qualified to be a Palestinian for, for that matter. Again, what kind of a country does not allow Jew to be a citizen of its, because he's Jewish? A, a really very strange ideology. So the main problem is that there are Arabs and Jews, and the Arabs want one thing, the Jews not be here and that. The Jews want to live here peacefully. So apparently there is a conflict of interest. Their interest is to kill us. Our interest is not to be dead. It's a problem to get the middle ground when those are the terms. Um, I cannot be half dead. That's part of, maybe part of the game that, uh, that someone can play about zombies. I'm not going to be half dead. I'm either going to be a, li a, a living Jew living in the land, land of my uh, uh, forefathers, or I'm going to be a dead Jew. That's the, uh, uh, um, the idea behind Palestine. All the Jews should be either not here or dead. And the idea behind Israel is leaving Jews in Israel alongside Arabs. Arabs can live in here also. There are a lot of Arabs living in Israel, not a problem. So that's the conflict here. We need to face the facts. We need to understand that when Israel left Gaza and moved back to the international border, if you want to look at it as that, as the international border, it's only it's true to say the ceasefire of 1949's border. We moved out of there. It was de facto Palestinian state. Apparently, the blockade did not block arms and not other things. They're not farms. They're not. Uh, and we all saw the before and after pictures of Gaza, so we know that it wasn't such a bad place, and it was not an open-air prison that someone tried to preach. So, and they decided to invest every dime of foreign funding and foreign aid into rockets, into tunnels, and into murder. So, you want me to, and the problem is that Israel wants to expand, that's the problem? Uh, I, I think that looking at the situation in the wrong just it's it, you need to know the facts before uh, trying to find a solution to the problem. Why do you define the problem and then they can find you the solution? Uh, Destiny, I mean, there's a lot to react there if you want to react. But I'm just going to ask you one question first, Simcha, on your question, which mm -hmm. is was you said the mass majority of the people in Gaza support Hamas. Do you think that the people in Gaza support Hamas because they say, or from their side, they say, listen, we're oppressed and only we hate Hamas. But the only option is Hamas, not that we like them. Could that be what they think? And if you give them a better option, they'll take that instead? Yeah, um, so uh, my opinion is that pe people have... Have... Oh, I oh yeah, Simcha, that's if you have to, and then we'll go see your destiny to react to all of his stuff afterwards. Um, oh. I think they had, many times in the past, had a lot of options. No one stopped them from choosing those options. But, and they chose Hamas because they believe in the Hamas Charter. Hamas Charter says it's not about occupation, it's not about oppression. Hamas is a religious movement, which uh, a jihadist extremist movement that teaches in the schools, that uh, teaches, uh, um, and it's in, in its own charter, it says that the day, uh, the day of redemption, the day in the future to come, will not arrive until every stone and every tree will tell the, the believer, the, 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 the Muslim, here is, there is a Jew behind me, come here and kill him. That's the charter of Hamas. That's the, the kind of, uh, of ideology that we are facing. And they got the vast majority of the Palestinians in Judea and Samaria and in Gaza. Uh, so so we, either we want to face the facts, 
or we want to invent some kind of a hypothetical future or, re or, or present reality and say, why wouldn't the world be a better place if? They have the option. Nothing blocks them from having the, the, the real uh, um, uh, heaven. I know because we left them there. With, uh, you, if, you, if you would understand the, uh, the kind of agriculture, advanced agriculture, that the Jews left behind when they left God in 2005, that we, it, 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 just on agriculture alone, the Gaza Street could, could thrive could be successful, could be could export to all the world, to be really the Singapore of the Middle East. They could have done it. They chose to take away the the the, the area that was civilian areas the Jews used to live there and have them as a training camp for the death troops. So that's what they chose. Don't don't let them run away from their choices. And if you want to see them as people, as Destiny hinted, Palestine, Palestinians, so they should be in charge of their own choices. You cannot tell them you are people, you are adults, you are, uh, you are human beings, and say you are not responsible to the choices that you have made. Okay, so I want to ask further questions, but I think it's, up to, it's probably Destiny's turn now to uh, respond. Um, I mean, yeah, there's a lot to bite into. Um, I mean, you can play word games in terms of calling it Judea and Samaria. I know that especially after 67, a, a lot of very far right Jewish people became obsessed with the idea of controlling all of that land again. Um, I, I mean, in terms of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, I, I guess the way that I view it is it, it basically, I would say far right Israelis are, are basically down a gambled path where they want to see how many terrorist attacks can they absorb in order to shore up control over this territory. And, and that's essentially like the far right gamble, you know, for all for all the from the river to the sea talk, I'm pretty sure the Likud as part of its party platform literally has like the same statement that their goal is to prevent the establishment of Palestinian state, that they refuse to relinquish any part of Judea or Samaria historically or the West Bank. Um, and that they I think they believe that the establishment of a Palestinian state jeopardizes Jewish security, et cetera, et cetera, um, or security of Israel for Jewish population, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the reality is, is that like this situation is untenable as a status quo. It will not work. There will be more terrorist attacks. Palestinians are clearly not happy living in occupied territories. The situation is highly unstable. There has to be some effort taken to move things to a final solution. Um, and I, I feel like, um, I mean, as has been demonstrated, I feel like there isn't an appetite right now, at least in the right, in Israel, for any final solution. That's a really unfortunate phrase. For, for any like final settlement to the Palestinian problem, for any final um, way to resolve this issue, because they know that if they maintain this kind of unequal status quo, the only thing that really happens is Israel gets a stronger and stronger claim to territory in the West Bank because the settlements will continue to expand. And at some point, it's it's known that you're not going to ship four or 500,000 uh, Israeli citizens out of the West Bank. It's just way too many people. The, the claim to that land becomes stronger and stronger. Um, in terms of, I mean, in terms of, yeah, I don't know. There's a million other things I could chew into, but I mean, like that, that's just like a, that's a reality on the ground that has to be dealt with, that the living situation is untenable. Like do Palestinians need to take responsibility for terrorist attacks and everything? Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. I think that Gaza is, is taking, you know, tens of thousands of bombs worth of responsibility right now for the Hamas terrorist attacks. I think that, you know, in the past, uh, crackdowns in the West Bank in response to intifadas have been, you know, them taking responsibility for the terrorist attacks. But none of these facts None of these ways of referring to the West Bank as Judea and Samaria, none of these mentions of security, um, trying to give Sharon, you know, a ton of credit for unilateral disengagement in 2005 in Gaza, which I don't really think he should get much credit for because it was unilateral. We didn't even get any negotiations out of that. Um, I, none of these things change the fact that you've got millions of people that are living in an occupied land that want some sort of final settlement or final negotiation on this problem. And that's just not happening right now. I don't even know if that's on the horizon. I don't know what the, the current... Uh, coalition government or whatever, I don't know, or the unity government, I don't know what the government in, in Israel right now is even willing to give up in terms of figuring any of that out. Or again, if the goal is to just push off any of these negotiations, see how many terrorist attacks you can absorb and continue to shore up a demographic majority in different areas of the West Bank for future annexation. And what negotiations would you like to take place? 
Um, well, like I said, I mean, like on one hand, like if, if the Gaza Strip is completely demilitarized, I think that has to come with the lifting of the blockade. I think there's a good argument for why that blockade exists. But I think that if you uh, occupy that zone again, or if you demilitarize that zone, the argument in favor of the blockade disappears. I think Palestinians have to see that if they play by the rules or if they play nice, there's some reward there for them. It can't be you're blockaded. Now you're invaded. Uh, now we've demilitarized you. We're occupying you and you're still blockaded. Like it can't be everything. It just leads to more and more unstable situations. Um, and more importantly, I think Israel knows this because they have to be mindful of how the international community views them. And even more importantly, they have to be aware of how the um, surrounding Arab communities view them. It would be a real shame if, if the Arab peace with Israel, however cold or frigid that might be, were to slowly unroll or unravel because of Israel's treatment or mistreatment of, you know, the Arab population and the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. I think it would be really tragic. Simple. Once again, there's a lot to respond to there. Yeah, first, I don't really understand what uh, blockade uh, Destiny is talking about. Um, meaning, I, I really don't understand. Um, I think that um, nothing, are you talking about blocking the way in or blocking the way out? First, we know how much people and ammunition and money and uh, uh, and uh, um, all kinds of of, of uh, uh, goods, food and and and, and supplies uh, came into Gaza in the past fifteen years. So I'm not I'm not sure what blockade are you talking about. Um, well, the, they uh, say air and land, right? Yeah. So so again, I, in blockades, usually nothing goes in, nothing goes out. That's a blockade. Uh, we know for a fact that the vast majority of the weapons that we uh, saw came inside Gaza from somewhere. So apparently the blockade either, either does not exist or did not work. We also know that a lot of goods and supplies came into Gaza and funds. We know it came into Gaza. And we know that workers was were coming from Gaza to Israel, working in Israel, bringing inside money before October 7th. So I'm not sure what kind of blockade are you talking about, but uh, to make sure maybe I don't understand what's now blocking Gazans from leaving Gaza? Israel is blocking them? Well, I, I don't understand the word games being played, or I don't know if there's like no, a political I'm, thing, I'm, but no, I mean... I, 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 Bethany, um, I, 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 um, I have to say, if, if someone um, answers my um, propositions with and need, feel the need to uh, uh, say far right or, uh, or, or to try to put some kind of arguments that I did not say in my mind, I understand that he agrees with what I said. So, so because he can't, he can't argue with it. I really don't understand what kind of blockade are you talking about. Sure. Judea, so when I say, well, yeah, Judea, so when I say Judea, blockade. You know, is Libya in some area? were under Israeli control. Are they on under blockade? Um, I don't. I wouldn't know as much about the West Bank. I'm pretty sure that because of how Area C works, Israel does control all the borders. But I don't think that the restrictions. You control are so all the borders. Are, are they under blockade? For the West Bank, I wouldn't say so. I don't okay. think so. In Gaza, what blocks? What blocks? Uh, uh, if goods and money and people can go in and out of Gaza, is it a blockade? Um, I want to lock in Gaza now. The Gazans yep. cannot leave now because of Egypt, not because of Israel. Um, so, Egypt, uh, if Egypt was, if you saw what kind of of uh, fences uh, and fortifying of the fences Egypt has put on the border of Gaza, you understand that Israel is not the one doing any blockade on Gaza. And of course, hundred percent sure there is no need for negotiate. Of course, if Israel will control the entire Gaza Strip. There will be no need for a, a blockade that never existed in the first place. We will make. A, a well, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. Well, let me just ask. Let's, 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 let's give Destiny a chance. Clarifying to question. Well, because well, I'm curious. Do we acknowledge that the Israeli Navy prevents any ships from coming near the Gaza shore? That there is no access there, correct? Well, of course, there are ships coming in and out from Gaza for fishing, in and out, but we are, do not allow sh other ships to get to Gaza because we don't want them to smuggle and arm uh -huh. and ammunition. This yeah. is a, if that kind of blockade, I am, so I don't understand. We are blocking arms and ammunition from getting into Gaza. If that's the blockade, it will always, I hope, will continue. We are trying to block arms and ammunition to get to Judea and Samaria as well. 
but you would just agree. Are with you it. are you allowed to share? Muslim share? ammunition does not does not formalize a blockade. Blockade meaning you don't get people in, you don't get people out, you don't get food and and supplies in, you don't get food and supplies out. And and, and but Gaza people they they can send out goods and supplies. They can get in goods and supplies. That's the situation was before October seventh. They can get people out working in Israel. There were more than fifty thousand people Gazans doing it on on a daily basis. And they can go to Egypt if Egypt wants, but Egypt does not want them. And we don't control the border to Egypt. It's Egypt that controls them. So we are not doing blockade. What we are willing to enforce, and we will enforce, I hope, forever, that no arms and ammunition get into Gaza because we saw everyone, and I think you would agree with me, that uh, um, the, the, the kind of use that the people of Gaza and Hamas did with the arms and weapons that they had, I think needs to, uh, um, we need to keep a very close eye on what uh, kind of arms and ammunition gets into Gaza. I think that's a must. So the, Israel doesn't just block arms and, and ammunition from going into Gaza. Israel blocks every single ship. You're not allowed to dock in Gaza coming from the Mediterranean. You have but to you dock can, in you Israel. Can bring in through, you can bring things in through Israeli... Yes, that's or, called a blockade. Yes, when you say that you no, cannot control anything coming in out of your country, it has to go through our checkpoints and we have to investigate everything. Nothing can come in through, through sea. So, so that's why I understand... I understand. You don't you don't arms? I, don't understand. I understand. I'm I'm telling you that a blockade exists, and you say no, and then you tell me why the blockade exists. I know why the blockade exists. I understand no. it. I'm sympathetic towards it, but you're telling me why it exists. You say, well, we don't want arms and ammunition again. I understand, but what you're doing to prevent that is called a blockade. You're controlling all of the air access, of which there is none. You're controlling all of the sea access, of which there is none, and then you run the checkpoints, and then Egypt runs checkpoints on their side to get in and out of Gaza. It's a, a blockade, like stuff that goes so in and out is only what Israel allows. What I'm saying is that blockade that prevents people and, 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 and goods and supplies is one thing. That's a blockade. To, to keep Gaza demilitarized and having checkpoints, making sure no weapon is getting into Gaza, that's not a blockade. No, that's, uh, um, we can allow, we can allow uh, I, um, anything that is not arms and ammunition to get into Gaza. That was the case before October 7th. And once Israel will take control, military control over Gaza, I don't see any reason we will uh, uh, we will not uh, continue allowing civilians in and out, and and also and also uh, that. But we must protect our borders. So what you're saying is, and and again, that's why I asked you about Judea and Samaria. We will not allow arms and ammunition to go into Judea and Samaria. But there is not a blockade on Judea and Samaria, despite the fact that we control exits. Uh, land and 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 uh, and air, and they don't have sea uh, sea outlets, so they don't have sea. Uh, a lot of countries do not have sea outlets, but it's not called on being under blockade. The fact that if I check and everything that you bring in is legitimate, you can say the U.S. is under a blockade because you don't let uh, uh, um, anyone uh, smuggle in. Uh, cocaine, because so you have a blockade to prevent cocaine. No, everything that gets into the U.S. is being checked for cocaine and other things, and you don't let it, let it in. It's not a blockade. It's called a checkpoint. Yeah, I mean, we can play the semantic as we want. When we say, like, every country doesn't have a, a port, that's true, but Gaza is a sea-facing territory. I mean, like, they do have ports. The reason why they don't have access to them or can't utilize them is because the Israeli Navy blocks it. Um, I, I don't. I, you don't want to call it a blockade if that, I guess, hurts your feelings. Uh, it seems like too extreme a statement. That's fine, but like you're you're depriving a group of people from being able to exercise any sea, air, or really autonomous land uh, trade. You're blocking them from doing that with military well, force. You can call we're it a soft blockade if you trade. want, but I mean, we are allowing them trade. We allow them trade. We allow people to get in and out. Again, you, you, I did not get an answer. The border with Egypt is blocked, not by Israel. How come you are not facing, uh, you are not saying that Egypt puts a blockade on Gaza? I would say that. I'd say Egypt enforces the blockade as well, sure. They're doing their checks to protect the border. That's their job. I don't understand what, it's not a blockade. When you're protecting your border, that's not a blockade. That's called the border patrol or border checkpoint. Uh, again, why something that happens in Israel is called a blockade when it's happening outside of Israel, you call it a checkpoint. 
if anybody else outside of Israel was em embargoing or preventing, you know, free travel through rivers or through seas or through straits, I'm pretty sure people call that a cautious belly. People use that as an actual cause for war. Israel itself did it in 67 and they did it in the Suez crisis in 58, 56. Um, I mean, like, but this is known. So no, I don't think other states are normally in the business of blocking sea travel and preventing territories but, from having airports so or any kind of air travel. It's not so, ordinary or normal. So again, when there is, we are in a state, as you see, a state of war. In Judea and Samaria, we allow people and goods to go in and out. We do not allow weapons. That's not a blockade. Again, if you call it a blockade, it's a very strange, it's a playing with words, as you said. That's a playing with words. But I really don't, uh, we can dig into it way, way more. Sure. But again, um, you, you, you somehow, and I think that's a moral, it's, it's, it's a bad thing to do, I have to say. You compare the idea, I think, that the land, that the state of Israel has a right. You said occupied, I don't really know who did we occupy Judea and Samaria from? If you can um, enlighten me, I would be very appreciative. We did not occupy Judea and Samaria from anyone. But if you want to say that we occupied Judea and Samaria for some strange reason, we'll call it West Bank. Again, very strange reason. Um, the fact you, I mean, what do you, I mean, I mean, the Gaza Strip was occupied from Egypt in 67, and the West Bank was occupied from Jordan in 67, so, so, and I think the so, Golan Heights were also occupied from uh, Syria. Uh, we then we did, actually, not, speak, we did not speak about the Golan Heights, um, but if you want, we can do that also. But I'm, I'm not talking about the Golan Heights for, for that matter. I am, I am talking about Judea and Samaria. Judea and Samaria was held illegally by Jordan since, from, from 49 till 67, we are holding it way more. Um, no, almost no country recognized it as belonging to Jordan, and Jordan itself wavered all its rights in in the eighty. So, if we occupied, if you want to say we occupied it from Jordan, okay, so Jordan can have a claim, but Jordan does not have a claim. We have a peace agreement with Jordan, and Jordan said we don't want this land. So apparently, we're not occupying it from Jordan anymore. Um, the same thing goes from Gaza. Uh, Gaza Street was illegally held by Egypt from 49 till, till uh, uh, 67. We took it back. It was in the middle of a few times also with us before, but doesn't matter. We took it back. But again, we have a peace agreement with Egypt. Egypt does not want the Gaza Street. And you see, not only they don't want the Gaza Street, they are blocked. As you say, they're enforcing their quote-unquote blockade. So apparently they're making the, the fence between them and Gaza Street even higher. So they don't want it. Um, so who are we occupying it from? No other country. So there is a made up country that we occupied it that never existed, never existed. And now you're saying that if we are not giving this made up country who, who that was never existed, and never existed in, uh, in existence, um, the right to bring in weapons to kill us we're doing an illegal blockade on a country that was never existed. In existence, I'm, I'm really confused with the facts, I have to say. I, so I'm glad I get to argue with somebody on the far right because I see the, the, the same types and of games that are played on the far left. I think, okay. I, well, no, I, I mean, I can... I, so one issue that people on the far left have when they're critical of Israel is they constantly weaponize or they use international law in ways that don't make sense. They might reference, uh, you know, Resolution 242 over and over again, despite the fact that 242 doesn't refer to a Palestinian state or demand that one is created. That might refer to the occupied territories, and it could be rightfully pointed out, well, occupied territories from who? You know, in 48, these territories were illegally occupied by Egypt and Jordan, which is true. Um, and to say that, uh, it, you know, all this international law means that Israel ought to do this or that, and it's the only way that the situation could be resolved is a silly statement. And I would agree with that. None of the bilateral negotiations that Israel has agreed in historically have started or ended with this is what international law says. I agree with that. However, on the flip side, um, I think it's equally silly to say things like, well, what occupied territories? Sure, they weren't occupied from a Palestinian state. I agree with that. One has never existed. Um, but to pretend like there aren't millions of Arab people that feel completely dispossessed from their land, that have no political autonomy, that feel like they need to engage in acts of terrorism, that have no self-determination as a people, that's clearly and obviously true. The people in the Gaza Strip, the people in the West Bank don't feel like they have autonomy. They don't feel like they have a good settlement of their situation. That situation needs to be resolved. But so whether we want to... What? Do they want autonomy? I would say so. It seems so to be the why, case. So, yeah. why does, so why did they... So why did they uh, voted... Why did they vote 
in such vast numbers against uh, for for the for for the political movement and for the religious movement of Hamas that says specifically that they don't want autonomy, they do not want to self-rule, they want to kill all the Jews. So you're you're again you're giving them excuses that I don't know why you're giving them those excuses. I'm not, I mean, when your choices are between, I'm not get, first of all, when we say autonomy, I don't necessarily mean like democratic autonomy or something like that. I mean, autonomy as a collection of people, right? Okay. Um, the idea that the only choices you have are, you know, democracy or slavery is not necessarily true, especially in your region of the world. There are, you know, Arab states that prefer, for whatever reason, uh, you know, secular, secular dictatorships, Islamic Things dictatorships, they prefer whatever. A dictatorship, it's not, it does not make sense, I have to say. You, do you not can have a dictatorship. dictatorship. E Egypt is an autonomous country and has been historically, um, even if ruled by a dictator, you, even if you have a dictatorial leader, you still are autonomous as a state. The individual people might not have democratic freedoms, but you still have autonomy as a state to do things, number one. Um, and then, Number two, when you say like, well, why did they vote for Hamas? I think voting for Hamas is pretty dumb and Hamas is a pretty horrible group of people. But, and I, I know that you agree with this. It's not like historically the PLO was way better. You're not about to sit here and defend Arafat or the history of the PLO. Yeah, sure. And the Palestinian Authority is largely composed of the PLO. The Palestinian Authority has been largely accused of being corrupt for a variety of reasons, whether that's because um, people feel like they're just a security subcontractor for Israel, whether they feel like because the Palestinian Authority was staffed by a bunch of corrupt bureaucrats from uh, Arafat, whether they feel like the Palestinian authority uh don't represent local leadership in a good way and just make a ton of money off the suffering of people there's a lot of reasons why people didn't like the palestinian authority or the plo or even fatah um you, you know as part of the plo like there are good re there are reasons why people voted for hamas it sucks and it's unfortunate but to pretend like the people were just like well we're sitting here and we're peaceful and we're going to vote for the terrorist party because we just want to kill no, all the jews right. i think it's a little bit They're simple you're right destiny they're not peaceful and the entire idea behind the claim we there is Palestine and there is a Palestinian state is like to say uh, um, um, I, I, I I heard this term in the past and I think it's true. Uh, Palestinian to Arabs is what Nazi for Germans. Um, you, you you there are Arabs, a lot of Arabs, and they uh, deserve human rights and they deserve anything. And by the way, you before you made this kind of. Uh, um, equal sign between the Likud and, and Hamas because the Likud wants to have uh, um, uh, a country from the river to the sea. That was your uh, comparison. But the Likud, as I, I think I know what they say and what they want and what is written in their constitution, does not want to, to kill all the Arabs living between the river and the sea. Unlike Hamas, unlike actually as you said, there is not a lot of difference between the PLO and Hamas. So the Palestinian idea is this is not a place for Jews. That's why they started killing Jews way before there was the Jewish state, way before there was the occupation. That's why before October 7th, there was more than 1.3 million refugees, quote unquote, in Gaza, because they weren't refugees in Gaza because of the war of October 7th. They were, well, again, going to go to refugees because they think they have the right to go back to Tel Aviv, to go back to Haifa, to go back to each and every piece of land between the river and the sea, kill all the Jews and get it again. And get, get, get their land again. Again, it was never their land, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for the why that is going all around the world. But... You have, you, and again, there is facts matter, Dusty. Facts matter, and and the fact that we did not occupy, the fact that there are Arabs, Arabs living in Judea and Samaria, there were also Arabs living within smaller Israel, and we we do not kill Arabs. That's not what us Jews do. We were exiled for our, from our homelands, and we did not have an autonomy in many countries and around the world, some Jews living in other countries, um, even now, do not have autonomy. It does not let them, give them the right to commit terror. It does not give them the right to try to kill the native population or the non-native population. In some aspects, um, there are, we know for a fact, for a historical fact, that there were Jews in Poland before they were Polish in, in Poland. But still, no one, no Jew in Poland, where millions of Jews lived before the Holocaust, 
no one, no one of the Jews thought that they have a right because they are more indigenous to Poland than the Poles themselves, that they can kill Poles just for the fun of it and get rid of them and have an autonomy. Somehow, yeah, yeah. for the Palestinians, people justify it or give them excuse. And for that, I don't understand. I mean, I'm not trying to, I don't, I'm, I've never excused terrorist attacks, but I think at some point we just have to reconcile with the situation on the ground. And I think that, especially for that region of the world, I think the signal that unfortunately everybody has sent to everybody is the only time anybody's going to listen to a peaceful uh, offer, or the only time somebody gets what they want is if they can do it through military conquest, right? Israel massively expanded their territory in 67 through military conquest. Um, Israel wasn't willing to negotiate peace with Egypt until Yom Kippur in the first few days of that war that were incredibly scary for Israel because it looked like the Arab states actually had a lot of power. The Oslo Accords didn't come until after the first intifada. Um, the unilateral disengagement from Gaza didn't come until after the second intifada. You know, when Israel lost arguably in Lebanon, well, Hezbollah appeared. When Israel unilaterally disengaged from Gaza, well, Hamas appeared. From the Israeli side, sometimes these things seem bad, but then from the opponent's side, these things kind of seem good. Well, hey, you know, if we're peaceful and we don't do anything, uh, not to say that the Palestinians have been entirely peaceful, but if we're peaceful and we don't do anything, <laughs> it seems oh, like nothing happens. But then from the but then from the Palestinian side, anytime somebody wins conflict or is doing good in conflict against Israel, it seems like they get more legitimacy to actually negotiate some type of deal, you know, and, and all the things that I just laid out that have been arguably good for surrounding Arab states or good for the Palestinians seem to have come off the back of violent conflict because Israel seems unable or unwilling to bring itself to negotiate with the Palestinians unless it's to alleviate itself from some uh, unsustainable military conflict, which that pattern has to break. It has to break. Again, that's in the facts, man. Facts matter, and lying about history does not. I'm not. I'm not saying that you are making this lie, but you are buying into this lie. Um, that 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 for, for many many years people were lying to the world, and sadly those lies, if you repeat them enough, people believe them. I, I'm not blaming you on those lies, but 1967 was for the will of the Jews to expand. You just mentioned it, as you said, you personally, you said. The 1967 war was because of the blockade that blocked Israel. Um, you said it because and and the, and the, Wait, just to be clear, just to be really clear. Hold on, I don't think that 67 wasn't just Israel trying to expand. No, I think 67 no, was them taking advantage of it to expand. Right? No, it, like, 67, 67, 67 was an attack, a coordinated attack uh, that was planned by Egypt and Syria, and Jordan joined it. And unless, um, if Jordan wouldn't join it. We would never get Judea and Samaria, despite the illegal occupation of Judea and Samaria from 49. Um, the state of Israel, I, I think way more than needed, uh, offered time and again peaceful resolution. We never got any other, some, any other side to agree. Um, and, and if you, and you are reading history backwards, the only reason we had peace with Egypt is because when they had the best starting point to destroy Israel, and they lost the Yom Kippur War, lost miserably, and the IDF was very close with getting the third army of, of, of Egypt locked and, and very close to Damascus, and, and took over all the areas that, uh, that Egypt tried to take from us and tried to destroy the state of Israel on the Yom Kippur War, that's the, when the Arabs were... Uh, um, um, apparently um, understood, maybe for the first time, Egypt understood in 73 that they cannot destroy the state of Israel and they came to a peace agreement. You're reading history backwards because terror does not come from despair. Terror comes from hope. The Arabs, specifically Arabs living in Judea and Samaria and in Gaza Street and in some surrounding countries, wants to destroy Israel. The name, the code name for this destruction is Palestinian state because they know for a fact, and we know also, 99 Knesset members just voted in, on it two weeks ago. It's not far right as you try to color me all the time because apparently my arguments are, uh, are not easily uh, thrown out, so I need to be called far right. I'm sorry, just as a real quick thing, the only reason I refer to you as far right is, I'm sorry, I thought that your party was literally like the, uh, like a religious Zionist party. I thought it was considered I'm a, like a far I mean right the party. religious Zionist party, but the, okay. the views view that I am uh, um, um, giving in this talk are shared by a vast majority 
of the public in Israel. No to Palestinian state is a vote that 99 out of 120 Knesset members voted for just two weeks ago. Uh, and, and the idea that the Palestinian state equals the destruction of the state of Israel were the views that Begin and Rabin posed for the world for many, many years. So the, idea, the understanding that the Palestinian state is uh, the destruction of the state of Israel, that's the common understanding of anyone who's ever visited Israel. I don't know if you have visited Israel, and if not, maybe it's a good, it's a good uh, time to send out an invitation. You're welcome to come, really. I'll be very happy to host you and show you the facts on the ground. And you can hear from anyone you want, because I think once you see it with your own eyes, you understand that the Palestinian state when the vast majority of the Palestinian population comes in the morning to, uh, uh, to, the, to the school, to the mosque, to everywhere you can imagine, and say, we need to kill all the Jews, is exactly like the idea to, let's, to, if you would offer Great Britain to start a Nazi state in London, that's the offer of a Palestinian state. And I, I believe no one in England would accept to have a Nazi state uh, uh, in, in, the, in the suburbs of London, and no one will give Al-Qaeda a state in the suburbs of New York. The idea to have uh, a Palestinian state in the suburbs of Jerusalem or Tel Aviv is just as crazy. Sure. Well, okay, just real, real quick. So I want to let, let the record show that I take great issue with the framing of almost all of that, but I don't want to argue. We don't have to argue on all the history. I'm just curious for two questions. Um, so the first one, the first question is, do you think that if Gaza is demilitarized and if the trade and border access maintains the way that it is, and then Israel continues to expand its settlements and continues to try to annex parts of Area C, if that continues, do you expect the Palestinian people or the Arabic people living in Judea and Samaria and Gaza Strip, however you wish to refer to them, do you think that that is a tenable and maintainable status quo? That's the first question. And then the second question, if you think not, what do you think a good final resolution to the disputed territories or whatever, however you want to call them, um, Judea and Samaria, you know, the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, and then Israel proper, what is like a good final resolution to this problem? What does that look like in your eyes? Those are, I guess, like the two questions I would have. Um, final resolution is, uh, is, um, is something that's uh, very hard to imagine. We don't know.